A lot of people put unlicensed games in the same category as if they're just low effort titles. Case in point, a majority of the titles by Color Dreams were very low effort and mediocre. But is this always the case? Or are there unlicensed games out there that aren't that bad? Well, let's take a look. What's going on? It's Poger, coming at you with another video. It's been rough for me. It's 2am right now and I got an exam tomorrow. So we're going to be talking about the Sachin games. I did a Color Dreams video last year, so I thought I'd do this too. So this is kind of random, but I wanted to give a shout out to Feral Inferno. He's really close to being monetized. He hit the thousand subscriber mark about six months ago, but his watch time is not quite there yet. He's got a more casual laid back style with his videos. He's the type of person that you'd sit on the couch and play some games with. He's got his Game of the Year series going on right now, and then he does a lot of live streams of games as well. I'm a big fan of his content, and if you haven't already, definitely check him out. He could definitely use that extra push to get him monetized. And then do me a favor, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button right there. It's only a small thing, but it helps our community grow. Anyway, let's talk about Sachin. Nintendo's first home console was very successful in the US and Japan. Their competitors were having trouble finding the same footing. Knowing that they were number one, Nintendo had some very strict policies with third-party developers. In the US specifically, Nintendo only allowed companies to make five games a year and forced them to buy great cartridges from Nintendo, rather than making their own. Nintendo also didn't allow specific types of games to be made, such as religious ones. Some companies were highly against Nintendo's rules, but they had no choice but to follow along because Nintendo was leading the home console market. But there were still some companies that fought back. Konami, having a big library of games they wanted to bring over from Japan, created a second company called Ultra Games in order to bypass the 5 games a year restriction. Some companies decided to release games without Nintendo's knowledge. This meant reverse engineering the 10 NES chip, which prevented unauthorized games from working on the console. By making unauthorized games, this allowed companies to get around Nintendo's policies. They could make their own cartridges without purchasing any from Nintendo, and they could make as many games as they wanted. Generally, people assume that the majority of unlicensed games are bad. However, there's multiple categories of unlicensed games. First, there's the ones by Tengen. This was a well-established company that was fully capable of making high-quality NES games, and some of their titles actually were licensed by Nintendo. But down the line, they were getting tired of Nintendo's policies and decided to go the unlicensed route. This is one of the rare cases where a high-profile company made unlicensed games. Then we have the unlicensed game companies which didn't have the same resources or talent as bigger companies. Most people think of Color Dreams. Their games were usually very low quality, and you could easily tell them the first 15 seconds of playing. The colors are all washed out, the music is terrible, the controls are bad, and the list goes on. But to be fair, Color Dreams didn't develop a lot of the games that they published. There were a few other unlicensed game companies that were hiding in the sidelines while Color Dreams was taking all the heat. In fact, one company in particular made quite a few more games than Color Dreams did. In 1988, the company Sachin, also known as Tin Shen Enterprise, was formed. Despite being a Taiwanese company, their games would end up being released in many different regions, including the US. Their games actually had a pretty big footprint despite being unlicensed titles. Their early games were rough around the edges. Just like with Color Dreams games, you could easily tell by looking at them that they were very low quality. Their first ever game was Jovial Race. While the game was technically developed by Joyvan, Sachin would buy them out, so it's considered a Sachin title. Anyway, the game is not only inspired by Rally X, but it bears a strong resemblance to BB Car, which is a Famicom title developed by Wan Shenwei. Both games even use a purple color scheme. However, while Jovial Race looks alright, the game is not near as good as BB Car. You can't move diagonally like you could in the other game, and you play the same stage over and over again. The only difference is that the flags are moved around. Not the best version of Rally X. 
Another early title was Mission Cobra. It's a very basic shooter where you have a limited amount of fuel. If you get hit, you don't immediately die, but you lose some fuel. You have weapon upgrades that you can collect that help along the way. So it's obviously a 1943 clone, but much more primitive. The sound effects are no better than a Texas Instruments calculator. Not only that, but the graphics are lazy, and there's only three stages in the entire game, and then it repeats. The presentation is also very poor. The title screen looks ugly, and some of the text is not positioned correctly, and the menus will sometimes change color between stages. What happened? But to be fair, the weapon upgrades are pretty cool. Here's Silent Assault. It's a Contra clone where you can shoot at the enemies, and there's items you can collect. You have a life bar, which is something that Contra didn't have, but the controls are a lot worse. Unlike Contra, you can't shoot diagonally, and you can only fire off one bullet at a time. Sometimes enemies will drop an item, but they disappear way too quickly. For some reason on Stage 2, the items will fall right through the floor where you can't grab them. There's ladders, but you can't climb them. Not sure why they're even there in the first place if you can't use them. The collision detection is also strange. Sometimes you're able to go through walls when you obviously shouldn't. Basically, the game is Contra if you take away most of the aspects that make Contra great. Let's check out Hellfighter. It's a platformer where you throw knives. You can collect these crystal balls that give you special abilities like a three-way shot, a hadouken, and a shield. You can also break blocks, which is an interesting attribute. The graphics are actually fairly decent in this one. Your character sprite is very large for an NES game and well detailed. Some of the effects, like the fire coming from the ground, look really nice. The only issue I have is the camera. Your field of vision is very poor because the screen only moves when you're all the way to the right. They couldn't give you a little more room to see? But I'm actually surprised by this title. It's not bad. Sachin would experiment with different genres. They made a Galaga clone called Huge Insects. I think the background graphics are way too distracting, but otherwise it's playable. They made a Tetris clone called Pyramid. Not a bad game, but the Tetris pieces are so weirdly shaped, it's hard to fit them nicely on the stage, so it's near impossible to score any points. While Sachin did publish some of their games in Taiwan, they relied on other companies to distribute them elsewhere. In Australia, their games were published by the company Hess, and in the US, Color Dreams and American Video Entertainment published their titles. In Japan, Hacker International published Sachin's games. Since Hacker International was a company that mainly released adult games, some of Sachin's titles, like Pyramid, were modified to be given adult themes. It's worth mentioning that Sachin not only developed software, but hardware too. They made the Q-Boy, which was a Famicom clone that was bundled with six games. It actually supported composite, which is more than what the original Famicom could do. So anyway, Sachin's games ranged from being okay to very lousy. They weren't really improving the poor reputation that unlicensed games had, but this would change very soon. While Sachin's earlier games were pretty lousy, they would show some improvement with future titles. The game Galactic Crusaders was very similar to Mission Cobra, but with some improvements. The music and sound effects are much better. The boss battles actually have parallax scrolling using sprites, which is impressive. Really cool that an unlicensed game company was adopting strategies that the bigger companies were using. Similar to that, the game Metal Fighter was a unique horizontal shooter. Here, you play as a robot that can collect weapon upgrades. Like with Galactic Crusader, the sound and music are more appealing. There's also a more single layer parallax scrolling which looks really nice. So while you can definitely tell these are unlicensed games, Sachin was learning from their mistakes and their games will progressively get better. It's clear that this company was capable of decent work and we're about to see that right now. In 1994, Sachin released Jurassic Boy. It's a very fast platformer that's obviously inspired by Sonic. Your character is very floaty and your only attack is jumping on the enemies. Unlike Sonic though, you can't spin dash, nor can you even duck or roll. Sonic 2 was already out at this point, so they could have easily implemented these abilities. Not sure why they didn't. The graphics are really colorful and the music is pretty good.
The physics are also different from Sonic. When running through loops or tunnels, the game automatically takes over your character, so it doesn't feel natural. It actually reminds me of the Sonic Game Gear titles, which had similar mechanics. Despite that, your character is very fast, and I like how it plays. For an NES game, they did a good job making this feel like a Sonic title. This is a really ambitious game from Sachin. But one of their biggest projects would be Q-Boy, not to be confused with the console I mentioned earlier. You play as a puffball who can shoot projectiles at enemies and you can perform multiple jumps mid-air. To me, it looks like farting. Each time you fart, it takes power away from your power meter, so you're limited on how many times you can perform mid-air jumps. There's a power-up that keeps your power meter full so that you can fart continuously without repercussions. Unlike most of Sachin's other titles, this one is completely original. The level design is also great because you can only mid-air jump a limited amount of times, so you have to be careful when you use them. The enemies also don't die unless you push them into a wall or hit another enemy. Your projectile alone is not enough to destroy them, so that makes the game much more difficult. The graphics look very bright and colorful, almost like a Kirby game, and that's a big compliment. The character designs look great, and every stage looks different from one another. The music is also fantastic. Overall, it's really hard to tell this is an unlicensed title. Q-Boy really shows that Sachin was capable of great work, it just took them many tries to get there. A lot of people put unlicensed games in the same category as if they're all low effort titles. Sachin was mostly like that. Their earlier titles like Mission Cobra and Silent Assault were rough around the edges, but they showed some initiative with their later releases. The company started adapting cool strategies that bigger developers were doing like parallax scrolling. Their new titles like Jurassic Boy and Q-Boy were impressive for being unlicensed titles. So that notion that unlicensed games are all bad is not always the case. Hey, I just wanted to thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it this far, hit that like button. If you enjoy this type of content, hit the subscribe button for more content. Both of these things really help the channel grow. If you have anything to share, feel free to leave a comment. I read every single comment on this channel, and I'm pretty good at replying back. Anyway, have a good one.